Thank you, Isabel, for answering your question. Mm -hmm. The first one will be, how do you process your work with uh, the directors in general? In general, actually, there is there does seem to be a pattern, yeah. which is nice that I'm sort of discovering. I usually um, am on quite early um, in terms of the uh, whole process, so they wouldn't have started filming yet. And so usually I'll sit down and talk to the director, having once I've read the script. Mm -hmm. When you're working with a director that you don't know very well, you sort of... Um, you weirdly, you have to get to know each other quite quickly, so you sort of have to get to the um, the centre of a of a point uh, so sort of easily, and so your interpretation skills have to be quite uh, uh, flexible and and um, the, you need to have a good muscle in that way, uh, so that you can. But very rarely do I um, talk to directors about music. I usually talk to them about feelings or um, yeah, what the impact of a scene needs to be. Your sister's work on Fleabag, uh, is it different? Was it easier or more complicated to work because you know each other? It's, oh no, it's much easier. I would expect to have maybe in like 20 years if I'd worked with the same writer for, for 20 years. But because we've grown up together, we already have that kind of... Um, ease of communication and because we know each other well enough we can sort of read each other's minds slightly so I feel like it's a it's it's of course it's a real privilege to have that already and also because we share such a we have such a sort of similar sense of humor it's usually a lot of fun and what are your most important influences yeah sort of composers but also artists you know painters and um, poets and and writers but just Musically, I think I come from a very classical background and uh, my whole uh, education and learning, I was really brought up on like the um, and Bach and Mozart, but then really the one, the composers that I really um, connected to were the sort of late romantic composers and really fell in love with Mahler. And then there's slightly more, and then more modern composers who have helped me sort of undo my classical uh, ways to enrich it in a yeah different exactly way. and enrich it in a different way and and help me um uh simplify actually um a, a huge influence at the moment for me is and uh, who i've worked with a number of times is martin phipps um who's a phenomenal composer and yeah has helped me a lot and uh, let's dive now more into fleabag um there is a real change in season two and how, how did you process with this change about the music when I read it, when I first read it, it felt it was immediately really clear that this was a different kind of animal to season one. She's grown up. She's um, she's obviously a little bit older. She um, is in a different emotional space. Um, she's kind of resolved a few things about her, the way she was living in series one, because her um, her relationship with herself had already changed, and therefore also her relationship with looking at the camera had changed. There's lots, um, there's much less of it in season two. It seemed to me that the music could slightly do what the camera was doing in series one. In series two, perhaps the music does a little bit of that in terms of speaking her internal conversation that was given to the camera. I feel like the music was doing that. Speaking of the choir version, there is also uh, the church version and we think it is one of the most funny ideas on television this year. <laughs> uh, who had this idea? W was it yours? Uh, and then I think we'd been listening to some Prokofiev and, and sort of weird, like really classical composers. And then uh, I think Phoebe said, what do you think about a choir or something mm -hmm. like that? And then I sort of thought about it. And then what was interesting is that I recorded a, an adult choir mm -hmm and then put that on episode one, and it didn't work, which was interesting, because the voices were too mature. The choir was gonna work, we knew that, that was absolutely certain, because we put it, already put it later on in the episodes, and by kind of episode two, already it was sort of working well. But episode one was a weird one, it didn't. And then I went back and re-recorded it with kids' voice, so with a boys' choir, and then put it on episode one, and we realized that the reason why it worked suddenly is because um, there was a vulnerability in the voices of the boys that really connected um, to that dinner. In, in general, how do you come up with a musical theme? I have to be very relaxed. And usually I'll be sitting at a piano. Drinking a coffee. Drinking a coffee, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Drinking a coffee, maybe having a snack. 
Um, and sort of slightly, I have to, weirdly, I have to sort of lie to myself that I'm not doing it. Because if I think that I'm doing it, I suddenly feel a pressure. But if I'm just like noodling and drinking the coffee and like having a biscuit or something, um, I can kind of, yeah, I relax into it and then I can sort of come up with something. But I do also know where I'm most comfortable in terms of um, shapes of melodies and harmonies, and I do return to those things. Good. And you talked about um, other shows. So we saw the one on ABC Mur Murders. Yeah. Uh, it is a really, it's darker. It's a darker vision compared to the other adaptation. And we have the feeling that it, this style is more close to your personal composition. Oh yes, you're absolutely is, right. Is, yeah, That's true. true. Yeah. That's so interesting. That you thought, yeah, um, it is. I think main, I think I do, uh, I really enjoy musically and also sort of aesthetically and, and tonally in, in, in the work that I do in films and, and TV going into a dark place. Um, it's interesting like with comedy because I've Com Fleabag is really the only kind of comedy that I've done but I like it because when you're when you approach comedy with drama and if you approach comedy with tragedy almost in the music like Fleabag I think with the Greek chorus there is a tragedy there is a tragedy about it I think um, in its sound then that becomes quite an interesting combination of things thank you so much Isabel for answering your question thank, thank you, you so much. much for having me uh,